In podcast episode number 71, I have a conversation with Dr. Anina Schmid. Anina is a specialist musculoskeletal physiotherapist, a professor of pain neurosciences at the University of Oxford, and the head of neuromusculoskeletal health and science lab at the Nuffield Department of Clinical Neurosciences at Oxford University. She has published over 100 papers with a primary focus on nerve entrapment neuropathies, neuropathic pain, and nerve regeneration. Throughout the episode, we explored the complex nature of entrapment neuropathies, the challenges of diagnosis, the benefits and limitations of different types of treatment, and some promising advances in neuroimaging. Anina offered a comprehensive view of her research and clinical experience with entrapment neuropathies, bringing forward insights on diagnosis, patient education, and the future of nerve pain management. Anina began by providing a foundation of entrapment neuropathies. She described entrapment neuropathies as conditions where nerves become compressed or trapped in areas like the spine or peripheral joints, leading to a range of symptoms including pain, tingling, and numbness. Examples include carpal tunnel syndrome, cubital tunnel syndrome, and sciatica. She emphasized that these conditions are more than just nerve compression, as each presents uniquely based on the location, cause, and severity of entrapment. In addition, the presentation and predisposition to these neuropathies can vary considerably from person to person due to factors such as age, genetic predisposition, hormonal events such as pregnancy, and the presence of inflammatory conditions like diabetes. Anina highlighted that understanding the nature of each specific entrapment neuropathy is essential for effective diagnosis and treatment, noting that a one-size-fits-all approach can be misleading. For instance, nerve entrapment in carpal tunnel syndrome differs significantly from cubital entrapment or a neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome due to the structural differences of the surrounding tissues in these regions and the functional loss symptoms. Each case requires a unique evaluation to understand the specific nerve response and the best management strategy. We also tried to debunk the myth of the piriformis syndrome and Anina also provided us with clarification on how to appropriately interpret results from dermatome and myotome testing. Anina also discussed the promise of advanced neuroimaging techniques, including MR, neurography, and ultra-high field MI in identifying subtle nerve pathologies. While she acknowledged the potential of these imaging technologies, especially the high-resolution 7 Tesla MI, she was careful to point out their limitations, such as high cost, limited availability, and artifact distortions in certain imaging settings. She explained that these advancements, though exciting, are still emerging tools and are not yet widely accessible in clinical practice. One of the key takeaways from our conversation with Anina was the importance of patient education and expectation management, which she believes are fundamental to successful treatment outcomes in entrapment neuropathy cases. Anina emphasized that nerve pain can be distressing and often misunderstood, leading many patients to fear a severe or permanent issue. For patients with nerve-related pain, Reassurance and proper education on the nature of their condition can help alleviate anxiety and improve pain management. Anina also shared that clear communication around treatment expectation is essential. For example, recovery from an acute entrapment episode, such as lumbar radiculopathy, can sometimes take months, which patients should understand from the start. By explaining that symptoms can persist even after the immediate cause is addressed, clinicians can help patients remain patient and engaged in the recovery process without prematurely worrying that treatment has failed. She stressed the role of clinicians in helping patients make sense of their symptoms. When it comes to conservative management, Anina highlighted the role of nerve mobilization techniques like tensioners and gliders. These techniques aim to restore natural nerve movement within the surrounding tissues, potentially alleviating symptoms and promoting nerve health 
Anina provided insights into when these techniques may be appropriate, noting that they can be beneficial in mild to moderate cases of entrapment neuropathy, where the nerve is not severely compressed. She also explained the physiological effects of these techniques. By promoting nerve movement, tensioners and gliders can improve regeneration within the nerve. This in turn may improve nerve function and reduce symptoms. Anina pointed out that these techniques must be used judiciously as overstretching and compromised nerve can lead to increased irritation. We discussed that for more severe cases or those unresponsive to conservative treatment, pharmaceutical interventions may be necessary and in cases where pharmaceutical management and physiotherapy are insufficient, surgical interventions are an option to consider as increasing function loss severe neuropathies and unbearable pain should be avoided. Addressing these issues early can help avoid more serious consequences as well as avoid prolonged recovery timelines and difficulties in restoring function. At last, Anina also shared the area and methods of research her team is involved in, ranging from trials to laboratory-based clinical studies. Her perspective on the future of nerve pain research and treatment is that the traditional approach of conducting one-size-fits-all clinical trials may not be the most effective way to find new treatments for entrapment neuropathies, given the high variability in how patients experience and respond to these conditions. Instead, her research group is conducting more individualized research approaches that consider the diverse presentations and needs of patients with nerve entrapment grouped via a method named named deep phenotyping. We finished off by discussing Anina's three takeaways that she emphasizes from our conversation and she highlighted how important it is to be specific when diagnosing an entrapment and not being a conformist in just saying, oh, it's just sciatica. Secondly, she emphasized on the importance of managing expectations, patient education and reinforcement as part of our treatment as neuropathic pain can be very scary and take time to resolve. And finally, she highlighted that in research, we should be braver in adopting innovative targeted methods instead of conducting trials with a one-size-fits-all approach, as this is likely to fail in providing relevant information while it is time and resource consuming. All right, so this was a brief summary of podcast episode 71 on entrapment neuropathies with Dr. Anina Schmidt. I hope this raised your curiosity to listen to the whole episode. If you would like to have more resources, download our PhysioTutors app to listen to the podcast episode, even in your own language, and get access to the transcript and infographic as a premium member. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you in another video. Bye.